With the help of your elected leaders here today, we had an extraordinary two years of progress. We passed the American Rescue Plan. Now, everybody knows it, but we did so much, no one knows the effects of it yet. We're just, just, they're just coming into play. You have to live the bill in order to appreciate it. Now, expect to hear a lot of that kind of useless, inaccurate pablum over the next two years. Now, according to Axios, Biden's speech in Michigan today is kind of a dry run for what's to come in his potential 2024 run. Now, apparently, White House advisors see the midterms as the ultimate validation that voters are concerned about protecting democracy, women's reproductive rights, and giving Biden passing grades, apparently, on the economy, because isn't the economy great? He also, they also point out that Biden's 2020 bunker strategy, look at work like a charm, relaying to Axios that Americans seem unbothered by his constant weekends away in Delaware or at Camp David. In other words, we can expect Biden's basement strategy 2.0. Joining me now, Molly Hemingway, editor-in-chief of The Federalist, Fox News contributor, and Monica Crowley, a rare appearance in Washington, former Trump Treasury Assistant Secretary, host of the Monica Crowley podcast. All right, Molly, just days after his 80th, the octogenarian, um, does uh, Team Biden seem a bit uh, overconfident? Is this, a, is this kind of a little... Uh, game they're playing here. They just want to seem like they're not lame duck at this point. Well, to some extent, they have reason to be confident. Their strategy in 2020 did work out well. You had the corporate media running the campaign. Biden could stay in the basement. A pandemic. Um, yeah, yeah. You had, and then in the 2022, you had similar things with the with the media helping the Biden administration. Biden wasn't on the ballot in 2022, though. And so redoing this strategy, I think, is unlikely to work well, given that now people have so much. Uh, awareness of what it's like to live under the under the Biden administration. And it only works well for him to run the same type of campaign if you have drastic improvements in the economy. And I don't think anybody's predicting that. Now, Monica, earlier today, Biden was asked for asked everyone for a bit of patience on the economy. Watch. We can increase production and lower prices for American consumers and businesses in the short term while accelerating our investment and in transition to a clean energy future. And we're going to do that. We're doing it. It's going to take time to get inflation back to normal levels as we keep the job market resilient. Monica, is this going to work? Uh, no, it's not going to work. I mean, patience. The man has been in office now for two years, and look at what he's done. The economy is in historic catastrophe. Remember, when Donald Trump handed off the economy to Joe Biden in January of 2021, he handed him the fastest economic recovery from any crisis on record. Inflation was at 1.4 percent. So all of this economic catastrophe that we are living through now with astronomical inflation, high gas prices, supply chain crisis, crisis, now maybe a railroad strike. All of this is a direct result of the Biden administration and unified Democratic control over the last uh, two years in terms of pushing so much money down into the system, creating this inflationary environment that every American is suffering through right now. It, he cannot turn it around because, as he said, right after the midterms, Laura, he's not going to change course. He's not going to change course because he's completely committed to what Obama once called the fundamental transformation of the nation. Yeah, and so it, there will be no course yeah, correction. They, they can't. They he certainly can't change their policies. Now, Molly, today after that Oath Keepers verdict that they were salivating over all afternoon long and into the evening at the other cables, Democrat Congressman Jamie Raskin leaned into another key strategy for the Dems in 2024. The election that we just came through was a very positive thing in terms of the vast majority of the American people trying to stand up for democracy and freedom and the constitutional framework. But we have to remember that Donald Trump and the forces of chaos and uh, vendetta and authoritarianism are still very much out there. Molly, this is representing an administration that refuses to condemn what's happening in China, but apparently I guess any crowd of Republicans is going to be an insurrection from now on. Well, and it's interesting coming from Jamie Raskin, someone who didn't just reject the results of the 2016 election, but also famously wrote about his belief that uh, George W. Bush and Dick Cheney had stolen their election. It's very common to hear this type of rhetoric from Democrats. But I do think it speaks to something that's important for Republicans to recognize. Democrats have been able to make some of these messages go unchecked. And I think a lot of Americans are wondering, where is the Republican Party to stand up for the fact that there are 
are two s standards of justice in this country, and that a lot of people who have been Republican, they, you know, there seems to be an attempt to criminalize this thing. And also, Jamie Raskin should remember that in his uh, in in this election, people did choose to give the House of Representatives to Republicans, mm -hmm. probably in part to stop mm -hmm. some of these uh, things that were happening with the J6 committee and other things. All like right, that. ladies, thank you. Great to see both of you tonight. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.